This week saw another Sugai Axo power meter land in the Llama lab for testing. So in today's video, I'll cover all the details of this particular version of the Axo meter. We'll do the unboxing and configuration of this meter in a one by setup for my gravel bike. And we'll deep dive into the two data sets that I have both indoors and out to see how this thing stacks up. The reason why I'm re-reviewing the Axo power meter, I had two questions. One, will it need power scaling like the other unit that I reviewed, either up or down? And does this rival the Quark power meter that I already have on the gravel bike, which is exactly the same form factor as this, but at twice the price? All that and more coming up in today's video, starting off with the pronunciation of this. Uh, I've seen Sugai, Sig I. Uh, I will call this the Axo meter from here on in because my pronunciation is probably incorrect. My history with Axo power meters, lots and lots and lots, is the summary there. Uh, I've documented this in my previous review of the Axo meter that I set up as a two by road configuration a few weeks back. The summary being, I've tested these meters on and off since February 2020. I have around 60 data sets now and over 90 hours of ride time. Lots and lots of data and observations have been sent to the company for review. And I've got to say, they've addressed most of the issues that I've raised to produce what I call a pretty solid performing power meter. A quick whip through the technical specifications of this meter, everything we expect pretty much. Spider-based power meter, the compatibility is road, mountain bike. There are lots of modular versions of this meter to choose from. This one in particular was the SRAM compatible 84107. There's eight bolts to get the crank onto the spider. Four chainring bolts and a BCD of 107. That's where that comes from. The wireless data you get from these, Ant Plus, Bluetooth Smart. The measurement or the data you get out of it is total power. You'll get cadence and you'll get left-right balance, although it's a bit of a guesstimate of left-right balance given it's a spider power meter. Power accuracy, plus or minus 1% claimed. Power range between 0 to 2,000 watts. Cadence, 30 to 220 RPMs. It's accelerometer based, so no magnet is required on your frame. The battery is a rechargeable lithium ion battery. 300 hours of battery life claimed with USB charging. It has active temperature compensation. It has auto zero, firmware upgradable via their app. The weight, well, it varies. The claimed weight on one of the units is 101 grams for the SRAM 34110 version. We'll put this on the scale too before we get too deep into installing this on the bike. In the package, you get the spider, charge cable, manual, color decals, and it comes with a two year warranty. The AXO power meter in this video was sent over to me by cycling100.com, who are the Sugai E distributor over there in Europe. So a big thanks to them for sending this one over and making it N equals two in the Llama lab for these newer Sugai E units. Their pricing on this particular spider, $334 US, 296 euros and around 470 Aussie dollars. Remembering this does require a crank set and some chain rings to be a full power meter. In the box, neat little package, we get the USB charge cable, some colored decals, the power meter itself, some information about Auto Zero, and some other documentation that I'll put to the side. The spider comes with a little sticker indicating which way to put the crank arm. And the colored decals, we get a few of those to choose from to match our bike. Onto the weight of this unit, this unit weighing in at 107 grams. Not bad at all for the spider and the electronics. A little bit of grease on the interface before installing the crank arm. Eight bolts in with a setting of four newton meters on the torque wrench. It's also printed on the spider, which is very handy. Four chainring bolts. Now these are tightened down to 12 newton meters as per the SRAM technical documentation. It's also worth pointing out that this spider is more than capable of running a two by configuration as well. I'm running a one by setup for this crank set so it can go on my gravel bike for the testing that I'll be doing. Okay, final product. Put this on the scales too with the 38 tooth chain ring. coming in at 395 grams and with the other crank arm with a bit of dirt on it too, 674 
for the chain set. Installation on the Aspero was straightforward given I already had a similar chain set already on. I left the red left side on and just installed this with the force and the AXO meter. Loading up the application here to check for latest firmwares. It's detected that over Bluetooth. We've connected hardware version 8, firmware version 4.015, which I do believe is the latest. Yep, confirmed. And I'll go back and do a calibration via the app. Now the calibration was performed at 6 and 12 o'clock on the cranks, not the photo you're seeing here. And it has a successful result there. The app will also show a calibration history too, if you calibrate via the app, which is quite neat. After the indoor testing was complete, it was out to the big bad open world and the varied terrain of the Creswick Forest. Here's a short little climb. Thankfully, no snakes spotted today. Here's a rougher section of road. And here's a faster and damper section of road just south of there. As always, here we are on my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. This should be pretty quick because the data is pretty good. Okay, so indoors I had the Doretto XR up against the Sugai Axo and kept in check with the Asium Duos, the SPD version, given this was on my gravel bike. So standard Llama lab test here, 10 minute warm up, and we'll dive straight into the details by grabbing this here. And straight away, things are looking really, really good. As is the case with a lot of power meters, after the first five or 10 minutes of looking down indoors, you can pretty much get a feel for, is this thing in the ballpark or not? This thing was more than in the ballpark. This was hitting home runs straight away. 223, 225, 225, all looking good. A little bit of jaggedness there up and down from the real power that I'm reporting. I'm not very, very smooth under erg mode and that isn't erg mode smoothing. So that's all looking really, really good. For the 200 watt steady state into the 250 watt steady state and into two sprints. Now I had to do two sprints because I only configured it with a 38 chain ring, I think it was. So it's kind of hard to get uh, a lot of power behind that with the gearing that I had, but two sprints performed. This is unsmoothed data too, so I didn't even put three seconds or five seconds smoothing on this. This is looking really, really good up against the two other meters. Uh, on average there for that little section, 206, 207, 208, all looking really, really good. I said this was going to be a fast Llama Lab test review. Let's keep rolling. Onto the overs and unders, 150, 350, 150, 350, 150, 450, and repeat. Nothing to report there at all. That's how power meters should perform. 231, 231, 232, all within ballpark. A little bit of variance here and there with the recording and things, but look, that's as good as it's gonna get with the current technology that we have. Into a short little hill attack simulation and just riding along. 242, 241, 242, all looking good there. Um, look, to nitpick this, if anything, but I can also make an excuse for why it is, how it is. The AXO appears to be like one second delayed here and here, probably a recording thing with the head that we're using. So it's once per second. That's really as good as it's going to get. Another small section of just riding along, just riding along and a short little acceleration up a hill. I tried to catch the Coco Cadence Bunch and failed. Um, 114, 114, 114. Um, power wise, indoors, job done. This thing just works. No scaling required. That made me very happy. Jumping down to the left-right review of this. Now, left-right from a spider base power meter, give or take, given they estimate what's left and what's right. Uh, I would trust the Asiomas over this. So on the Asiomas there on the end, 113, 112. The Axo, 121, 104. Hmm, not quite getting it in the ballpark there for the left-right. However, left-right from a spider base power meter, I've never really trusted anyway. If you want true left-right, you'll need a true left-right independent power meter. By independent, I mean sensors both sides. This is not really something that uh, I ever think they'll really nail with a single point of measurement on the spider. Cadence data, overall, 182, 181, 182. Uh, the Duretto XR estimating cadence from the power that I was doing on the pedals. Uh, no spikes, no big drops there. Few from the Elite Doretto, but that's just where it uh, tries to auto detect cadence. Looks like a mess here, but look at the numbers. 93, 93, 94, we are done. Cadence wise from the Axo. Again, like power, it just works. Mean max power graph, 
also makes me pretty happy. That does include the 10 minute warm up of the very first pedal stroke and bedding it in and me jumping on the pedals a few times. So there's probably a few discrepancies around the short area, but once everything's settled in and bedded in, it's looking really, really good indoors for the Llama lab test. Summary numbers indoors. 166, 166, 167. Weighted power is also there on screen. Max power, 1170, 1169, 1206. Very, very close. So that is as close as a 100% pass mark you'll get in the Llama lab test from a power meter straight out of the box. No scaling required. Almost from the first pedal stroke, it was absolutely brilliant. However, I did do the zeros after 10 minutes of stomping on the pedals, as we should, but very, very happy. It's late in the year. And it took almost this long for me to be this happy from a Llama Lab test. On to the second data set that I grabbed from this AXO power meter, and this was today out on the gravel bike, which is effectively the complete opposite of the Llama Lab. Not a controlled environment, temperature changes, vibrations like you wouldn't believe, on-road, off-road, and lots and lots going on. Uh, 166, 169, looking pretty good. The Asiom is up against the Sugai Axo. Uh, the first little hill here was probably 15 or 16 percent. This was at walking speed. It really was very, very slow. 277, 275, a little bit of jaggedness there with the smoothing. That was looking really, really good over that three minutes at uh, over 300 watts there. That's a brutal climb. From that onto the gravel and the van wrist that is. Let's pull into here. 209, 208, <laughs> it's all looking really, really good. A little bit of a jump through here. Look, I expect these kind of spikes from any power meter outdoors. There's going to be rock strikes, there's going to be bumps, there's going to be lots and lots of things going on. So there's a trade-off between having things too smooth and missing data or reading it raw and you know, getting these spikes we see here. So it's probably the only thing I can pull out of that there. Uh, this little section here which is your stop starts with like a one turn of the crank or something like that. So again, gravel riding, off-road, lots and lots going on, but the numbers are lining up really, really well. Uh, same story all the way through. We'll jump into a little harder uh, acceleration here. Again, a few stop starts, but a short little acceleration on the dirt. Not quite topping out at my max sprints, but uh, looking pretty close there between those two meters. And again, another little hill jam in town on the tarmac for a little bit longer. And you can see there, there's no major discrepancies. I'm looking here for like 100 watts, 150 watts, 200 watts out. If you've seen my other power meter reviews, you'll know exactly what I'll pinpoint if two power meters don't line up in the sprints. But these are looking pretty good. A quick look at the left right power outdoors. We'll look at the very slow hill climb. Uh, 138, 138 on the Asiomas, 146, 128 on the Axe. So again, the left, right from this spider power meter, or to be honest, any spider power meter, just doesn't work for how I pedal the bike. However, the Asiomas were happy, I'll consider that a source of truth. So left, right power, mm, I'll never trust that from a spider meter until I'm proven otherwise. Cadence, yeah, an absolute dog's breakfast. It's everywhere on the gravel. Uh, you can see why I'm looking at the hill climb here. That was pretty consistent. But the rest of it, it was just on, off, on, off, on, off. And a moment of silence for a mean max power graph, which looks absolutely brilliant. And lastly, the overall stats from this outdoor ride. Asioma Duo is up against the Axo. 166, 169 average, 211, 212 normalized. 1099 versus 1094 max, and the cadence, 83.9, 84.6. Not bad at all. Numbers like that make for a very, very happy llama. And actually, I was kind of impressed with some of the terrain that I took that thing over today. Now, the comparisons of this meter from what I would call its bigger brother, the SRAM Axis Power Meter Spider. Now, I do have one of these on the gravel bike. I've been using it for the last 12 months. It has been absolutely brilliant, but it does weigh in at 690 US dollars. Now, this is in comparison to this AXO Power Meter, which weighs in at 334 US dollars. That's less than half the price. Now, the question is, will this force, yes, it's a play on words there, Quark and SRAM to reduce the price of their power meters? Bike Bug in Australia have dropped their price from $8.99 AU down to $6.99 AU. It is out of stock, but there is movement at that station. In the last 12 to 18 months, I've seen a lot more discussions online about these mid-range slash budget power meters. The price performance ratio is looking very, very attractive these days. But there's one thing I do need to bring up, and that is support. Always something to consider before a purchase. If you're buying direct from China or from AliExpress, your mileage may vary. 
I would highly recommend using the distributors that are popping up in different regions who will then honor the warranty as sold. There's still no holy grail for the cheap, accurate, reliable power meter, but these things are getting very, very close. Okay, before wrapping this one up for today, I've got to answer the two questions I had at the start of the video. Does this unit need scaling or adjusting? No, it was perfect without, and will this unit rival the more expensive SRAM Quark version? Yeah, it did. But the longevity is another question. Let's see how it goes over a few months. If you're an AXO power meter user, let me know in the comments below how things are going with your unit. And with that, thanks for watching.